This is a 2015 Subaru Forester. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the AC condenser. The condenser is right down here. It's right in front of the radiator. You have to remove a bunch of stuff in order to access it. I'm going to show you how, but first, why are we replacing the condenser? The condenser can develop small leaks as a result of road debris, flying load debris, or other damage that can occur, and they will cause a loss of the refrigerant over time, and when this happens, the AC will not cool effectively or will stop cooling altogether. How do you know that your AC condenser is leaking? Sometimes the leaks are visible as oily deposits on the condenser, but a lot of times they are not visible. So you have to use this combination of tools. This is a UV dye that you can add into your AC refrigerant system. This is a dye injector, or it's a refrigerant oil injector. You attach it to the low pressure port and you can push this dye into the system and then this is a UV light, a black light just like for looking at those old Velvet Elvis posters under this light any leak of this UV sensitive dye is going to be visible with this light so this is how you can find leaks in your AC system anywhere uh, whether it's in the condenser or any of the lines or the joints of the system. And this is how we determined that this AC condenser needed replacement. I will include links to these items in the video description. The first step when I do this is to recover all the AC refrigerant from the system. So I've connected my gauge to the AC system and then I've connected it to my recovery machine with the recovery tank. And this is um, just to get all the AC refrigerant out for two reasons. One, it's expensive and it can be reused. And B, it's a pollutant. You don't want to just blow it out into the atmosphere. Give a hoot, don't pollute. I have my assistants here helping me. And to get to the condenser, a few things have to move out of the way. I'm going to get to it by pushing the radiator backwards. And so I should be able to access the condenser right in front of the radiator. Now first, this intake has to come off. And this plastic shield that's here has to be unfastened, if not come off entirely. And then we should have access. Let's get started. He always does a very good job of supervising the job to make sure that I don't screw up. Isn't that right, Ricky? The intake duct that was up here came off without too much ado, and this is a very good opportunity to inspect your air filter, see if you need a new one. Looks like this one is on its last legs here. This entire air dam or shield just came off. It just has plastic fasteners through these holes, and there's a little bit of a trick to passing it, getting it past this handle, but it's just a little bit of finagling you can do it. These are the two radiator stays here and here, and I'm going to remove them. Now I have this entire radiator top support here, and I'm going to remove it. It has two bolts on each side, one facing forward, one facing up. Same on this side, two bolts. I also disconnect the cross member from the hood latch stay has these two bolts. By the way, all these bolts that I'm removing off the cross member, they're all 12 millimeter heads. It turns out that this radiator support, top support, is not only bolted to the latch stay, but it's also spot welded right here in these two spots. So there's two options here. One is we can try to reach down to the very bottom where the latch stay bolts on with two bolts to the bottom cross member all the way down there or we can just drill out these two spot welds and I'm leaning towards the second option. I went right through these spot welds using this drill and this freed up the cross member so I could pull it right off. These are the drill bits that I always use, and these are good even for hardened steel. They cut through it like butter. So if you ever have a job like that, uh, get yourself some of these. 
Now we have access to the AC condenser. It has this insulating strip on the top that will transfer to the new condenser. And it is attached to the radiator with two bolts. One is on this side and one is on this side. And of course we have the AC lines going in and out of the condenser that we have to disconnect. Way down there in the bottom, you can see where I've placed the wrench. We got one AC line with a 10 millimeter hex bolt. The top line from the compressor attaches in kind of a screwy location. If you forgive the pun, you can sort of see the block where that it goes into. I was trying to point to it right there with my finger. It's a little bit difficult to access, but it can be done from this angle. Just reach in with a very small uh, socket wrench. Now we get to a part of this job that is kind of a pain more or less. And it is uh, because this condenser has two fastening tabs at the very bottom that fasten into the radiator and they have uh, 10 millimeter hex bolts on them and the only way to really get to these is you must lift the condenser and radiator up together so that the uh, you can clear the head of the bolt and then uh, you can unfasten the condenser from the radiator. The condenser is out. This side faces the front. Uh, this is the top. This is the bottom. These are the two ears that I was talking about. And these are the two bolts that go through these ears that fasten into the front of the radiator. And because of their position down low and the moisture accumulation down there, these bolts, they did not stand a chance. They just snapped right off. You can see how they both broke and so this means that uh, this is gonna have to go back in without these bolts it'll just be fastened from the top with the two top bolts but we're gonna have unless we want to replace the radiator we're not going to be able to fasten the condenser back down at the bottom now you see these dark discolorations on the condenser these are areas where the condenser is leaking and the oil produces these dark discolorations now with the condenser out all the way it's clearly visible that it was leaking this is a new condenser it looks like a very good quality aftermarket item and it's very affordable too and because of the current uncertainty about import duties and tariffs I am not going to quote you a price for this, but I will provide a link in the video description. Now these lines going into the condenser, they have O-rings. And of course, we're going to replace the O-rings. I'm going to match them with O-rings out of my universal O-ring set. Okay, the original O-rings are black and the replacement o-rings are the green ones and they're the best match I could find in my stack of o-rings I'm gonna test fit these and we'll see how they do so I hope you can see these on here I've test fitted these replacement o-rings and they do seem to be a perfect fit they're the right size and they have enough meat on them so that they will produce a nice seal and I always oil them a little bit with PAG 46 oil before I put them on. I've placed a bead of all-purpose adhesive, this Gorilla Glue right here, on the bottom. I'm going to do the same at the top, and this is so that the foam air dams can stick back on. And here we are with the foam transferred onto the new condenser. Another thing I do before installation is pour a house or two maybe just a couple of ounces into the new condenser before I install it. And this is to just replenish and replace any oil that was inside the condenser and the, the filter. By the way, the filter is attached to the condenser right at one end. I've installed the new condenser and I've connected the lines with the new O-rings to tighten them down. And before I get too far ahead of myself with reassembling everything, I'm gonna test the system by putting it under vacuum using this little vacuum pump here. 
But first, I noticed that these fittings with the valves inside them were letting off a little bit of hiss when I took off the caps. So I'm going to replace the valves and I'm going to use this assortment of uh, varied uh, valves and uh, this tool for removing the valves and I'm going to replace the valves in both of these fittings. This is the valve from the high side. Now I'm going to look in this assortment of new valves for one that matches it. I see, I think I see one right there. So this valve on the left is a brand new valve and it seems to be an exact match. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the valve from the low side. So the valve from the low side is exactly the same as the high side. I've replaced the valve cores, I've connected my gauge set, and I've run the pump, and now I'm holding the system under vacuum, and just to test that all the seals are good, and I'm going to keep it under vacuum like this for a while, before I reassemble all the cross member and everything, just in case that I have to get back down in there. The gauges have been holding the vacuum really nicely, so I've reassembled the entire assemblage here of the cross member and uh, the plastic pieces that go with it. And uh, ordinarily, you'd be ready to refill the system and bring it up to the correct pressure. However, I have some more repairs that I want to do. I want to replace the expansion valve that's back here and I also want to replace the evaporator which is in the cabin under the glove box because I do detect some smell of refrigerant in the cabin and that means the evaporator is leaking. So I'm going to stop this video here. We'll continue with the replacement of the expansion valve in the evaporator. They go together. So we'll do that in the next video. Thank you for watching.